Good morning everyone, how are you all doing? It's Amanda, it's the 6th of June 2019 and I've got an hour to sit here and talk about uh, a quite an important subject. So if you need to watch it in two parts, watch it in two parts. Um, but what we're going to be talking about today is the armour of God. And I actually, I've just been sitting here preparing and trying to get ready and I was looking up some of the traditional interpretation of the armour of God and I was getting really bogged down in the details and uh, Metatron just said to me, he said, put the books away, um, you, don't need to, you don't need to go back into old interpretation, I will help to, I'll help you to interpret it and bring through the right words for everybody. So that's what I'm going to do. I do just want to give a nod though to the fact that it is a huge subject and there is an awful lot of information out there already. So view this as part of a piece of the jigsaw with regard to a, a big subject, okay? So yeah, welcome to my new room anyway. I, um, Metatron needs to be lowered a bit, doesn't he? Because I've lobbed his head off there. But um, anyway, I'm sure he doesn't mind for the sake of one video. Actually, the most important part of Metatron uh, that I want to talk about anyway links into um, these two things here on his um, arms, which are called amulets, and that ties into armour. I will want to say at the outset that there is a very valid debate ongoing in terms of do we even need protection anymore in 5D? Or beyond. The truth is, if that we, if we are fully, every minute of the day, able to hold a fifth dimensional frequency, in every single interaction that we come across, every single person, every event, every moment, then the answer is probably no. But the truth is that I don't actually know anybody who's able to hold 5D constantly when they certainly are exposed to everyday life. It's easier to hold it when you are, for example, in meditation, when you're on your own, when you're on a retreat or in a workshop, when you're in prayer, when you're in a, a session. And it's also possible to hold it at other times. Of course it is. That's the whole point. But life is tricky and relationships are tricky and jobs can be tricky and the collective consciousness is still tricky. And so therefore it's very, very easy and actually quite normal to fall down in terms of what you ideally wish yourself to be and how you wish yourself to operate. This is really where we still need a level of, I'm gonna change the word protection to fortification because I feel as though it's um, a slightly newer interpretation of the concept. I'm sure in the course of this video, I will lapse and I will say protection, but really fortification seems to be a better way to describe it protection by its very nature puts us in a disempowered state that somehow we need help because we have not been able to fully embody our divine I am essence and hold that God light, God light at all times. But as I've just said, I don't think many of us are able to do that all the time. So there is still a place for fortification. And what is really interesting is that if you watched my June Metatron reading, we talked about the mountain. And if you remember, Moses came in as a guide during that session. And then my phone went at some point in, in that recording and it was my brother. And I just happened to mention that my brother's name is Paul. And I said, I don't know why, but that seems to be relevant not about my brother, about the name Paul. And lo and behold, I go today to look at doing a video on the armour of God. 
And I realise, of course, it was Paul in the book of Ephesians that wrote about the armour of God. And for those of you, I must just say also at this outset that this video is for everybody. It is not aimed at Christians, although Christians are very welcome to watch it. My work is non-denominational. I reference the Bible because it's what I grew up with, but I am completely open and tolerant to all beliefs. And I believe the material that we're going to be putting through in this video is for everybody. OK, but like we discovered when I did the video a few weeks ago with Krishna and Kali, there is so much to learn from every single um, faith and every single person or being within that faith that has contributed. You don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. And actually, Paul is a very interesting character within the New Testament because Paul was Saul. And Saul was one of the leading, was the, the leading persecutor of the early Christians. He was the one who was helping to round them up and send them to their deaths. He was very anti the message of Christ getting out. He was one of the persecutors. And then, of course, the story goes that he um, awoke. Let's put it in modern language. He awoke via light that came upon him, a beam of light that came upon him that made him drop down to his knees. And he awoke to the message of Christ, which he then followed for the rest of his days. And his words are within the New Testament. So that's the, that's the guy that we're talking about, Paul. And Paul is the person that wrote about the armour of God. What I seek to do in this video is to, I'm going to read the passage from the New Testament about the armour and tell you the pieces of it. But then we're going to bring in Archangel Metatron and Archangel Michael, Michael and possibly Zadkiel, I'm not sure, but definitely Michael and Metatron, who are going to help bring this into a more everyday language for everybody, okay, of whatever faith, for times when you feel as though you need some extra fortification via maybe your own personal circumstances, but also the world in which we live, which still, unfortunately, is quite dark at this moment in time. So, Let's just read then the passage. It's only a short passage. Um, you can read it for yourself. It's from Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. And these are the pieces of armour of God that I'm going to be talking about. Um, on my community page on YouTube, there are a, nearly a thousand likes the, for the fact that I'm going to do this video. And there's, there's over, I don't know, 200, 300 um, comments that have come in already on it. And I might read a couple of them. So, and I would suggest that you maybe go back if you're really interested and look at some of those comments because they're brilliant. Um, but anyway, the armour of God. So this is what it says in the New Testament. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying. So... That obviously is quite um, old language. It was written 
thousands of years ago. It was written to be interpreted in the days that it was written, in the days of um, Roman occupation and the battles that were going on during that time. We're now in 2019 as I make this video. So the words are going to be reinterpreted for the age in which we are in. And the best way to do this is to, um, as I say, turn to Metatron and Michael. I will just want, I want to say a couple of things that I might forget before I go into that, which is that I'm recording this on the 75th anniversary of D-Day. And D-Day was when, um, I can't remember the exact number, 150,000, maybe less, I can't remember, but certainly well over 100,000 soldiers, allied forces, um, descended on the beaches of Normandy to reoccupy France that had been taken over by Germany. And of course, it led to the eventual winning of the war. Um, but what happened is well over 4,000 men were killed uh, during that assault on the beaches. And today marks the commemoration of that. And um, what I want to say is that a lot that has been written over the years, including very beautiful poetry, war poetry, has often described the men that went and died in that manner um, as cannon fodder. It's a horrible term, but, you know, that's that's sort of how it how it's been described that they went in very much as I've got I've got old fashioned language in my head. I'm hearing innocent lambs, innocent lambs to the slaughter. And yet what I heard very strongly this morning is that God would never do that to his beloved. I'm hearing that word as well. And what I mean by that is the reality was, of course, that those 4000 men did die and they went into all accounts defenceless. But what I was retold, because I've already been told this before in other circumstances, is that at the moment of death, particularly when it is a death that is very painful and tortured in some way, that the soul is lifted up from the body before the moment of impact. And I was told that today because we're talking about fortification, protection, uh, where is God? How can he help us in difficult times to protect us from whatever is out there? So as I make this today, there is just this story that did happen 75 years ago, where 4,000 men were just pummeled by the, by the tanks and the gunfire. And they look like they were lambs to the slaughter. But yet I'm being told that in that moment, God was with them. Um, and God lifted them out of their bodies so that they didn't feel the actual impact of whatever it was that was going to ultimately kill them. And I think that gives us some comfort. Um, you could very well say, well, why didn't God stop the war? Well, we live in a world of free will. That's why. And um, God has to deal with what man creates here on earth. But what God can do uh, and I do feel this comes from God, and I'll explain that in a moment. What God can do is he can give us the armour to help us through difficult times in life. My feeling is that what we're going to be doing today, remembering these um, pieces of armour, these are things that can become a daily practice quite easily. And they are not something that you are supposed to get so obsessed about that if you forget you know, your whole world falls apart. Um, they are a tool to help you. They are a tool to empower you. Um, and that's really important. And, and I say that because it's rather, well, it's not strange. I was just led to see something today, just as I'm about to make this video. And uh, I was actually looking at the word amulets because Metatron has two amulets on his arm, okay, here and here. And I wasn't quite sure how to pronounce it. So I went onto Google just 
googled amulets and there is just this most bizarre story that is out there let me just get it up and it was only from a month or so ago it's a man in thailand who wore amulets in fact he collected amulets and let's just be for a moment those of you that don't know what an amulet is an amulet the definition of it is it's an object that pr protects a person from trouble okay so many things could be an amulet you know it could be something that you wear around your neck um it it, it, it could be i've got i mean I've, I've just purchased this thing which is linked into um emf protection um it's it's an object whereby um the intention is there that it's protecting me from trouble okay now this man he was a thai man he was 58 it's just the most bizarre photograph. I don't know whether it's going to show in my camera. Let me just put the, my computer up. I mean, look, he actually became obsessed. He, what is covering that guy's body is amulets that he went around Thailand collecting for his whole life, basically. And they're everywhere. They're all over him. And I mean, it's, it's, it's obviously completely and utterly over the top. Um, the story made the papers. There he is. I mean, bless his heart, you know, send him some love because he looks like a lovely man. Um, he, why he made the papers is supposedly the day that he went out without them was the day that he was killed in a car accident. So you look at that. Uh, yeah, we go. Thai man, 58, wore armour of amulets almost daily. He dies in a car accident the day he didn't. You read that and you think, oh, my God. Oh my God, you know, if, if I don't do, if I don't do what, you know, I'm meant to do, whether it's put a crystal on me or, or use a spray or put the armour of God on, you know, my God, what, what might happen to me? The thing is, with somebody like that, almost it had probably become like a self-fulfilling prophecy. He had, um, he had so invested in the fear energy that I need this to survive that of course, on the day he didn't have it, subconsciously, something came in to manifest that and make it a reality. So please, please, please watch this video with a balanced mindset. What we are talking about here is giving you some tools to help empower you, but not to put you into fear that, oh my God, if I haven't done it, what's going to happen to me? Um, Okay, Metatron's giving me the, the analogy of a good diet, okay? So we all know what we're supposed to be eating, okay, he's saying. We all know we're supposed to be eating our fruit and veg and plenty of water. Let me just have some, okay? If even 70% of the time we do that, we'll be able to get away with 30% of having a bit of wine, a cake, some crisps, some sweeties, whatever it is that we like. It's what we do most of the time that matters, okay? And it's exactly the same thing when we talk about fortification, protection. So, and, and there isn't just one answer. It's not just about you have to do this one thing. You might watch this video and think, nah, doesn't resonate. That's absolutely fine. Leave it. Use the techniques that do help you to feel safe. Because actually what we're talking about here really is safety. I was talking about this to somebody yesterday and I was reminded that safety is a prerequisite for everything. It's a prerequisite for absolutely everything in life. If you don't feel safe, you don't walk out of the front door. You don't do what you're meant to do in life. You can't move forward unless you feel safe. So here we've got God himself giving us some tools. And I say God himself because what Metatron said to me today, remember the angels don't wish to be uh, worshipped. The angels are not God. Metatron is not God. Michael is not God. They are all servants of God. They are all there to serve God, source, whatever you want to call it, the divine, the creator. And Metatron's saying, well, archangels have armour too. But he's saying it's not armour necessarily like you might expect to see it. I mean, actually, often with Archangel Michael, he does come with armour, doesn't he? I'm seeing a picture in my mind's eye now of 
Michael and he has got the armour, the silver armour, and he's definitely got his sword. Uriel as well often I see with armour as well. Um, but Metatron, you think, well, Met Metatron doesn't need any protection. Well, he says, what about my wings? You know, think about angel wings. They are hugely protective. When an angel has its wings completely and utterly outstretched, particularly an archangel such as Metatron, those wings are so huge <clears throat> and so strong and so tall and so wide. Um, A, they keep anything away from them that they don't want near them. They can also wrap the wings around them if they need to. They can encircle anything with those wings. The wings are protection. The wings are also linked to the fact that they can fly away from any trouble at any moment. You know, they don't have to stick anywhere that they don't need to. We also are angels with wings on our back, believe it or not. Um, we can't actually physically fly. You know, if I now jumped out of the window, I'd kill myself. Um, I, I realise that. But <clears throat> energetically, we have wings. We can wrap our own wings around ourselves to nurture, to protect, fortify, um, to strengthen, to support but also our wings, you know, there's that phrase, isn't it? You've ruffled my wings, <laughs> you know, you've pissed me off. But it's like, I, it's a bit like, you know, I, I can just extend my wings and I can just, you know, it's like, get away, you know, that energy, get that energy away from me. Uh, Metatron's showing me them actually, he's never showed this to me before. It's like the wings are a bit like feather dusters. It's literally like they clear um, that analogy of the dog shaking itself. Bella does it the whole time. You know, she comes in, she's been in the river, she shakes herself. It goes everywhere. But what she's actually done, of course, is she's cleansed herself. She's got rid of all the bits. It's now all over the floor or scattered somewhere else, but it's not on her. Wings are the same thing. Wings allow you to shake free. You know, let go of the debris, let go of the emotion. So remember that you have that as well, okay? And Metatron has that. He's got the biggest wings going. <laughs> um, it's interesting. Let me just put him up a little bit more so you can see the picture because some of you might have just stumbled on my channel and not know who I am. So I'll put the camera back to normal in a moment. As I say, I'm in a new room. I haven't quite got the pictures right yet. But can you? his, his wings are beautiful. And um, Jane, when she first painted me that image, I've actually got the um, the photographs of it half done and what she hadn't done is she hadn't colored in the wings they were just there in sort of profile shape and um when i came into this room i really felt that i could see the gold more than i had done in the previous room the gold on those wings look how beautiful they are okay and of course metatron is also holding a merkaba there the merkaba he's got the world within the merkaba the merkaba itself is hugely protective so this is why there are just so many aspects to helping ourselves to feel safe. <clears throat> okay, let's now go to the armour of God and let's just see what they want to say. I was told that the helmet is the last piece that goes on, okay? Let me show you the picture. Okay, so here we've got the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, trying to read this back to front, the breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, and the feet protected by the gospels. Uh, let's take it one by one. I feel as though I want to work my way up, actually. So I'm going to start at the feet. I'm going to start at the feet. Um, the feet protected by the gospel. So straight away, with that, I am thinking of Archangel Sandalphon. Archangel Sandalphon, within his name, is Sandal, okay? Sandalphon. Sandalphon links to the feet. Sandalphon also is an archangel who takes our prayers to heaven, okay? And Sandalphon is the one who helps us to walk with peace. I do actually feel that some of these items of the armour of God are linked to particular archangels, actually. Um, because God, if it's the armour of God, God is represented by his many archangels. So certainly the, the feet protected by the gospel feels as though it links into the Sandalphon energy. So I'm going to ask Sandalphon about it. Okay, 
So Archangel Sandalphon, bronze. And let's just, as we do this, imagine that you're putting on each item with me. So let's just link into our feet and let's ask them to be, I'm going to use the, word that, the words that are here, to be protected by the gospel, for our feet to be protected by the gospel, for our feet to be fortified by the gospel. What does that mean, Sandalphon? Let your words go before you. Let your, you know, got gospel, the gospel basically was the good news. The gospel was the message. The gospel was the message. The gospel became a book, but the gospel basically is the message. So let your words, let your energy go before you. If you start the day knowing and, and asking that your words go before you and your energy goes before you through the day. So see like footsteps in front of you of where you're going to tread through the day, where you're going to be going, who you're going to be seeing, what situations you may, might encounter. Even if you're just gonna be sitting in your own front room, see your footsteps as they go through the day. And the reality is, Nobody is going to consciously want to make those footsteps heavy, negative, angry, toxic, confrontational, argumentative, disruptive. No. Imagine the footsteps that go before you through the day, fortified as they are by armour, being peaceful, loving, receptive, tolerant, peaceful. Do you see what he's trying to do? He's trying to literally, as you wake up in the morning, and this doesn't have to take hours, by the way. It's just a very simple exercise. He's just asking you to tune into your feet. Um, a sandal font always gives you a pair of shoes. So... And it might change day to day. I will sum all this up at the end. I'll do the whole summary. But at the moment, Sandalphon is saying, let me give you the shoes that you need for the day. And then see those footprints that you're going to make through the day and let them be peaceful and let them be loving. And let your the words that you're going to come out of your mouth, as well as the energy that you convey. Remember, it's not just verbal. It's... Um, a communication comes in many different forms. Let that go before you so that the day is assured to be of peace. So your feet are protected by that. Let me just write here sandal font so I know how to wrap it all up at the end. The sword of the spirit. I don't think needs too much elaboration, actually. Um, we actually have the sword on the Metatron spiritual protection spray. Can you see that? And um, I was, that's actually, uh, what is that? That's going to be one of the images as well on the forthcoming Metatron Oracle deck. And it's the depiction of the silver ray. And... The sword of the sword of the spirit is the language, but basically it's the sword of it's the sword of truth. It's it's it cuts through anything that it needs to cut through. Uh, the sword given to you as armor is given to you to only do good with. You cannot do any harm with the sword that is placed in your hand by God. The sword placed in your hand by God is one which helps to cut free uh, anybody from anything that is negative. So this could be ties that bind, um, toxic, negative, energetic cords between you and another, or between situations, or between events, cutting through with um, clarity, with truth, with the right intention, 
The sword is also a deterrent. Let me just spray, sorry, let me just spray the silver so you can feel the energy of this. So we're talking about the sword of the spirit. The sword is only given, the sword is only given to those people that will be able to use it wisely. And I'm actually being shown by Metatron here that in the wrong hands, you won't even be able to lift the sword. That's interesting. So somebody can watch this material and they can look at the armor of God and they can think, okay, well, I'll put that on, but then I'm going to try and do a bad deed. Okay, I'm going to use it in a twisted way. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be protected by God to go off and do bad deeds. It doesn't work like that. You won't be able to do it. I'm being told that straight away. You will have the sword put in your hand, but it will be so heavy you won't be able to even lift it. It will actually be an encumbrance to you. The sword of spirit in the right hands put given to the one who has the right intention for it the sword will be light the sword isn't heavy that doesn't mean that it isn't a precision instrument capable of cutting through anything that it needs to it's got the sharpest finest blade it also has a sheath over the the tip of the blade um, so that you cannot harm yourself or another unintentionally so um, that sheath is taken off it um, by the divine when it is needed to. It's almost like it, it's, um, how can I explain this, Metatron? Um, it's not quite the right language, but it's almost like I'm being shown. It's almost like God has the remote control. <laughs> it's weird. It's like you and God are together. But it's like God has ultimate control over the sword, even though it's within your hand. Although you too are God as well. But it feels as though I'm, I just know that it can't do any harm and, um, and it can't be used against another that is against God. Um, it's almost like it has to be passed via God to be used. But this all happens in a split second. You know, this isn't like a communication that happens between you and God and like, OK, can I draw it now? Can I use it? It's all like it's that. It's seconds. This is all like a telepathic, energetic communication between you, God and the sword are one. Oh, OK, you, God and the sword are one. And that's why, you know, if it, I don't like the word devil, but let's just use it because it's there. If the devil were to pick up the sword, the sword would not be able to be used. OK, the sword can only be used by the one who deserves to hold it. And you do deserve to hold it. It's not about not being worthy. It's about having the right intention, having goodness within you, um, wanting to do good. OK, wanting to have a good day, wanting to try your best, wanting to try to be the best version of yourself that you can be. OK, if you wake up in an angry, frustrated, oh, I just want to rip their head off type mood you're not going to be given it, you know, because you wouldn't do that. You're a child of God. God doesn't put something like a sword into a child's hand. OK, uh, let's just see if there's anything else. Sword of the Spirit. Can we wipe it clean today, he says. Um, I'm seeing blood on the sword. And this is old blood. This is the blood that's been shed over many generations it's probably linked into the uh, the war anniversary which is today the d-day commemorations um let's just cleanse the sword that we all hold and let's take away the blood stains upon it okay so be it and it is done so the sword of the spirit um the next one the belt of absolute truth the belt of absolute truth. What's that about? Um, the belt of absolute truth is linked into integrity. Integrity. Think about that word integrity. Are you operating from integrity? 
Are you going about your life from a place of integrity? What interests me is that some of the words that I'm using here um, by, by nature are sort of old fashioned. It's almost like they've gone out of fashion. And I said a year ago that when I was particularly working with the archangels, that they were bringing back these old fashioned values of integrity, valor, righteousness we've got here, okay? Um, and it, it, it all feels like it's linking together. So when we put on the belt of absolute truth, who can help me with that one? Michael can, okay, let's go to Michael. So righteousness, Michael, show me the belt of righteousness. Uh, it's, he's saying it's, I'm being shown the analogy of a boxing fight. And you know that when you get a heavy, the heavyweight belt um, that you get given or the, the, the heavyweight champion of the world gets given when um, he is that and he gets given this belt. That's how he's showing it to me. It's like this belt and it shows that you are a heavyweight <laughs> um, in spiritual terms. OK, by that, he means that you are a force to be reckoned with. OK, not that you're going to knock five bells out of somebody else just that you are a heavyweight in terms of your stature. You are a heavyweight in terms of what you know. You are a heavyweight in terms of the light that you carry, which is very, very condensed, okay? When you put on the belt of absolute truth, it gives you the, um, the stature of the heavyweight. You also start to take yourself seriously. You know that anything that comes to you that is done to you can be batted away, that nothing can truly um, come into you that can fatally wound you when you have the heavyweight belt upon you. Who has decided that you own, that you are entitled to the heavyweight belt of the heavyweight belt? God has. God has given that to you and he has given it to many of his warriors and he does so every single day. Um, so he's showing me that the belt also it, it gives you strength in some way it's not that we have to be perfect it's not that we have to have deserved it it's just the fact that we feel able to stand before God and say please may I have the belt of truth upon me so that I can be like that heavyweight um uh, boxer is, is the analogy that I'm getting to take on the day, to take on the world, to know that I am victorious, um, that no blood will be spilt, that the, 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 the game will be fair, the game will be played with the right rules. Um, and that all I have to do is actually stand in my corner and wear my belt of truth. And nobody actually will have the um, audacity to come before me and challenge me. That, that's that's the energy that I'm getting with that. Um, something else that just flashed in and then flashed out. What was that, Michael? Belt of truth, heavy heavyweight, standing before God. Just feel that belt upon you now. Make sure he is saying that you envisage the belt all the way around you. Um, it's. Um, often the case that when you invoke armour of God, for some reason people seem to only just put it onto the front of their body. The belt by nature goes all the way around you. It goes all the way around the body. It protects you from behind as well. So if, you're, if you imagine you're in the boxing ring and the boxing ring is life, okay, and the referee is God, <laughs> okay, and actually there isn't anybody even in the ring because there doesn't need to be because you are there with this energy which is just completely and utterly fortified. But he's saying, um, he's saying the reason why the belt is at the back is so that nobody can creep up behind you and do something to you in that way, okay? So it's not just that you're protected in the ring, you're protected out of the ring as well. And the ring, of course, also is um, is the belt. It's interesting, okay, belt of truth. Anything else about the belt? You can put the belt upon a baby, he's saying, okay? It isn't about um, stature in terms of, you know, you've got to be grown up and have, um, deserve there's nothing about deserving this. It's just, it's given if you ask for it, okay? It's given if you ask for it, it's given to anybody. 
can we wrap the belt of truth around a, a problem or even a country? Yes, I, I feel I, I feel the answer coming back is yes, you can. Um, the armour of God was given with the intention of it being for a person, but it can be also used around situations. OK. Oh, animals as well. Animals as well. Uh, animals that are in service. Um, he's sh um, I'm being reminded now of something uh, of the animals, of course, that died in war, still die in war. But also this is a very UK reference, but we have a program called um, Britain's Got Talent. I don't particularly like it, to be honest, but I did watch the final. And on the final last Saturday, there was a dog. There's always an act with a dog. And this dog, um, I can't remember what it's called. There's a law that's just been passed, basically, in the UK. The Queen actually signed it into law uh, the night before the Britain's Got Talent final because of this dog. And it, it, the law is to protect. It gives a layer of protection and fortification for animals who are maybe, for example, police dogs, something like that. I think what had happened was um, um, a dog, you know, a policeman or woman with their dog went to some sort of crime scene and um, the, the policeman or woman was, I guess, being attacked or something like that. And the dog that was with them then attacked the baddie, you know. And I think um, uh, the dog, I don't know what happened to the dog. It must have been a sad story, I guess. But anyway, there's, there's something coming to come into law in terms of protecting dogs that are in service, protecting animals that are in service. So definitely, anyway, uh, Metatron is saying this can also be um, for, for animals in service as well or animals that need protection. So the belt of absolute truth. This is Metatron. He's so funny. He's saying that's if you can get it on a dog because he's saying dogs love to have their stomachs tickled. <laughs> And they do, don't they? It's like cats as well. It's like, they, you know, so are they going to let you put something on them then? Remember, it's only energetic, but he's just, he's lightening it because it's quite a heavy subject in some ways. Okay, we've done the feet, we've done the sword, we've done the belt of truth. The shield of faith. Well, um, let's just look at the picture. The shield of faith. Of course, the shield of faith isn't actually on the body. The shield of faith is something which is held in the hand, okay? It's around, and of course, the, f the shield of faith can be moved anywhere around the body. It looks quite heavy there, but I'm being assured that it's not heavy, okay? Um, okay, Metatron coming in now. Let me just get Metatron. He wants to come in with the orange ray, okay? Tell me about the shield of faith, Metatron. Keep your faith simple, he's saying. If you think that the shield represents faith, the more things that you attach to it and the more um, complex it becomes, the heavier it is to carry your faith with you. He's saying faith is actually very simple. <laughs> um, anybody's faith, ultimately, is about a belief in a higher power, is about the belief in the power of love over darkness, and maybe a few other things. You can add to that yourself. Um, so keep the shield of faith simple. And that is relevant to whether you are a Buddhist, a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim, whether you don't link to any of those faiths, whether you see yourself as pagan. Again, there can be a lot of, um, don't want to offend anybody, but it's like there can be a lot of clutter that comes with some faiths and belief systems. So if you're carrying your faith around you as a shield, keep it condensed, keep it simple. Ultimately, what is it all about? It's about believing in a higher power. Um, and that is linked into faith. Hold on a minute. Something I'm not getting here. Shield of faith. Shield of faith. I need Michael. He's saying you need Michael. Okay. Bossy. <laughs> need Michael. 
We all need Michael. Yeah, of course we all need Michael. Michael, okay, yeah, Michael's the one who has the, Michael's the one who usually has the um, shield, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, there's a picture. I want to show you a picture. Which deck is it in, though? Uh, it's a Doreen Virtue card again, guys, but I'm going to go and get it. Hold on. Crash bang wallop was me uh, knocking over some pens. No drama. Right, this is the picture. Where is he? Archangel, you know, I'm sure you know the picture that I'm trying to find here. Archangel Michael, it's the Doreen Virtue. Yeah, here it is. Oh, he hasn't, yes, he has got it. You are safe. It's this deck, the one she's probably trying to run away from Archangel Oracle cards. Um, look at that picture. You are safe. There's Michael. He's standing with his sword and he's standing here with his shield of faith. Uh, it's actually back, you know, you're seeing the back of it there. Look at the size of his wings as well. Isn't that confirming what Metatron was just saying? That these wings are very protective. You know, they're not just, a, they're not just a, a fancy. They are, I mean, they are serious wings there. Okay. Uh, there, he, there we got. We've got Michael, the shield of faith. Okay, Michael. Uh, why am I struggling? Oh, okay, I'm struggling with faith because faith is the hardest thing. Yeah, of course it is. You can't... Faith is the hardest thing. When you go through dark times, when you go through challenging times, when you go through difficulties in life, our faith gets tested, doesn't it? Everybody watching this, you'll have had times where your faith gets tested and you just want to you just think this is just a load of cobblers or, you know, this is too hard. I can't do this. You know, I can't do this. This is nonsense. But really, the person who is serious about their path, they don't judge those moments. They know it's part of the path. And... I was about to say they get back on the path, but you never really get off the path. I'm always shown that it's like a ride that you've got on. You can't get off the ride. Once you're on it, you're on it. Um, it's within you. And it's a, it's a path of faith. And here we've got it as a shield, the shield of faith. I can't imagine what it's like to go through life without any faith to have nothing there as a, as fortification, absolutely. Um, and sometimes you get judged for saying that, don't you? People will sort of shoot you down in terms of, oh, you just believe that because you're, you're too scared not to believe in anything. Um, well, that's nonsense because there's so much proof actually out there that angels exist or, you know, God exists, all the rest of it. I don't want to get into that in, on this video. But, you know, I'm sure we all know people that just don't have any faith, don't have faith in anything, just don't have faith in any higher power. And without that, there is no shield. There's no, there's no shield. You're just exposed to the elements. If you have no faith in anything, anything can come at you because you're not putting... You're not putting your your own energy into anything. So if you put you don't put your energy into anything and it's just it's like it's an open field, it's like open game. Anything can come and get me. Good, bad or indifferent. Your faith is a shield. Breastplate of righteousness. Um what does that mean? Righteousness isn't really a word that we use anymore, is it? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just looking up at the time. Because um, I've got to go in somewhere. Uh, breastplate, of, breastplate of righteousness. That is linked into, is it morally and ethically right? Am I operating from a place of being ethically right, morally right? And where the breastplate sits within the, within the body is at a very vulnerable place. 
it's the heart, it's the lungs. You know, if you don't have some sort of fortification here, some breastplate here, think of the days of, you know, being in the Colosseum, <laughs> you know, fighting for your life. You don't have anything here, the game is over really quickly. You know, it's just like knife to the heart. Nothing can reach this very vulnerable, but also amazingly beautiful area if you have the breastplate of righteousness on. Um, it protects the heart chakra and it protects the lungs where the air flows into our body, speech, freedom. So that is also an extremely important part of the armour, the breastplate of righteousness. Do you know the angels I want to bring in here? Uriel. And I don't know why, but I want to bring Uriel in at this point. Oh, I know. Hold on. Let me just get this way. Yes, of course it's Uriel. Of course it's Uriel. And it's Uriel in terms of the breastplate of righteousness because Uriel is linked to uh, legal matters. He's linked to judici judiciary. Can't say it. Okay. Um, and so therefore, hopefully, the legal system should be fair. It should, in an ideal world, operate on the right principles, the principles of law and order. Um, what is law and order all about? It's about trying to maintain a moral code in society. You could say the Ten Commandments that Moses gave. If you kill somebody, the, the law will come down on you. you you'll, you'll go to prison. Um, so it seems to be that Uriel links into the breastplate of righteousness, the mo mo morality, ethics, the code by which you live by. So again, when you put on the breastplate of righteousness, what you're doing is you are asking for your decisions that day to be the right decisions, um, to make the right judgment calls, to do the right thing to choose the right thing. Uh, I'm being shown, you know, consumerism now as well as another aspect of it. So we all know, don't we? I mean, I'm certainly from talking from my country's perspective. There's a big drive against plastics at the moment. So uh, when I try to remember, when I can, I try to remember, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to make little differences in my life. Um, you know, trying not to buy things with loads of packaging on the whole time and just very small little things like that. But why am I doing that? I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to do the right thing for the environment. I'm trying to do my own, make a contribution in that way. I'm trying not to buy so much stuff that I don't need, you know. Um, actually, interesting, this year, first year, it's like I, I don't need to buy any new clothes, you know, for summer. I mean, I have got a lot of clothes, but it's not that. It's, it's about I don't need it. It feels, um, I'm not saying I'm never going to buy anything new again. It's just like I really feel it strongly. It's like I don't need it. I've got plenty of clothes, you know. Lose a bit of weight, Amanda, and you'll be able to get into half your wardrobe again. <laughs> yeah, it's that type of thing. I'm being serious. Um, it's, it, it, morally, it feels the right thing to do. So you put on the breastplate of righteousness. Am I making the right decisions? Please help me to do that. The breastplate does that. Let's just bring Uriel in though. Uriel, Archangel Uriel. He, he's giving me a historic analogy. It's the D-Day analogy, um, <clears throat> which is that uh, those men um, launched, you know, the, um, the, the assault on the beaches, uh, but it was delayed by, I think it was 48 hours or 24 hours. It was supposed to happen a day before, 75 years ago. And they delayed it because of um, the weather, of all things. Um, but what was interesting yesterday in uh, the UK, with all the world leaders there, 
well, with the exception of Putin, but we won't, we won't get into that. I think he should have been there. Anyway, um, they acted out the decision-making process um, of the generals, of all the, you know, the different generals around the world who were sort of talking to each other in terms of when should we, when should we launch the attack. And um, it was not clear cut. There were people who wanted it to happen, even though the weather conditions were horrendous and many more people would have died. It was like, no, you, you can't, you've just got to go for it. But fortunately, sense prevailed, and they did. They waited 24 hours. That was a morally right thing to do, you know? I mean, you could say the morally right thing to do would be not to do it, but let's not get into the details. I'm just trying to give an example, okay? So Uriel is saying he helps with, he helps with these decisions, these complex, difficult decisions in your everyday life. Um, it might be to do with when you put the breastplate of righteousness on, maybe you need to have a conversation with somebody and maybe it's going to be a really difficult conversation, but maybe the timing just isn't quite yet right. Maybe you're being asked to hold back, but you will be shown when the right moment is. It's that type of thing. So it's like doing the morally right thing, doing it when it's doing the right thing is what I want to say. And then the last piece of armor that gets put on is the helmet of salvation. And, um, Apparently this was put on last, but I was told it was put on last before I read that. And um, I'm just going to open up my computer because there's a few questions I want to read from some of you. Um, it was put on last because the point is, unless you've got your helmet on, um, the helmet is the most important part of it all, really. Think about, again, how vulnerable the head is. Think about how, how vulnerable the head is. Um, Think about the, the, the chakras that are on the head as well. You've got the crown chakra, which is actually the place through which um, spirit can come through. You've got your ear chakras. You've got the altar major at the back. Um, I'm being told that the helmet of salvation is, again, it's not heavy. And it is, I don't know how to describe that. It's, it's more like chain mail. So it's not solid like that. It's not solid like that picture. It's like chain mail. And it is, uh, it's like, it's like chain mail. So basically divine light can still flow through it. Because if you think about that, that helmet, and you imagine light codes or, you know, source energy hitting that helmet, nothing's going to get through it at all. It's like it's solid metal. So this isn't solid metal. The helmet of salvation is not solid. It is more like mesh. And so the light can still come through it and flow to wherever it needs to go in the body. But equally, it's able to filter out anything that is negative. It gives the protection where it's needed. Uh, oh, OK. He's saying it can um, it can go from mesh to solid in an instant if it really needed to. That's interesting. Most of the time it's mesh, I'm being told. Most of the time it's mesh and it's open um, because it needs to be open to allow in, you know, messages and all the rest of it. Um, but it filters out the negative. But at moments of real crisis or if it was really needed, it would it would close up. It would become solid. Hmm. OK, um, so salvation. What does that mean? So salvation is one of those words in terms of um, Christian circles that is just um, a trigger for a lot of people because including me actually because I don't believe in uh, judgment day I don't believe in judgment day okay I don't be I just don't believe in that um, and I don't believe in hell and I don't believe in heaven in that in that old-fashioned way actually um, hell m much of the time is down here on earth there is no separation um, he heaven can also be here on earth as well. So this thing about, you know, saving somebody, I just don't, I just don't, I don't resonate with it. I mean, I, I get it the whole time, uh, not the whole time actually anymore. I used to get it a lot in the early days. People, uh, I might get it on this video actually, people contacting me, fundamental Christians, telling me that I needed to save my soul, you know, because I'm working with angels and, that whole thing about, you know, I, I need to save you. You know, nobody has to save anybody else. We're all divine beings. We're all able to make our own judgments. You know, I don't need saving. I'm perfectly fine as I am, you know, and I have God within me as you do watching this. So that whole thing about salvation, that's a really, uh, is an old fashioned word. And I don't like it. 
So I'm actually not going to call it the helmet of salvation. I'm going to call it the helmet of awakening. OK, that feels like a much better way to put it in our day for our language now, because awakening is something that you can relate to. It's um, it, that that is the that is what we're going through. We're going through an awakening process. Um, so the helmet of wearing the helmet of awakening is about in every moment in the day when you're wearing it, being able to see a higher perspective, being able to see a deeper truth, being able to see a different dimensional reality to somebody else who may be standing there unfortified, <laughs> unprotected in a very 3D mindset, you know. Uh, when you've got your helmet of awakening on, then everything is lighter, brighter, and it's a different dimensional reality that you're in by wearing that. So let's just go down and put them all together. Is there anything else to say about that helmet of awakening? Uh, that would be meta that definitely would be Metatron, by the way. So let's go back to this one. Anything else to say about the Helmet of Awakening, Metatron? He's showing me the crown. He's showing me the crown opening like that, you know, the petals of the flower. And he's showing me all of the higher chakras opening. And he's actually showing me that this Helmet of Awakening is not shaped like that either. It's it's cone shaped. <laughs> Might not be the most attractive thing, um, um, but I'm being flippant there because, you know, it's that whole thing about energetically uh, the chakras are growing. OK, they're growing. They're getting higher and wider. And ultimately we are going to evolve to have skulls that are more pointed and longer. OK, to basically house the, um, the the growing chakras within within the headspace. So when you put on the helmet of awakening, it actually it isn't it isn't tightly fitted onto your skull. It's really interesting. It skirts the skull. I'm being shown it skirts the skull like that, and then it's up here as well. So because it's actually encasing the chakras that you cannot see above your head which are just as important as what is here as dense matter within our skull. I also see in this depiction that the helmet, can you see it comes down here past the ears? It goes past the ears into the jaw and um, that is also to do with shielding out negative voices, okay? Shielding out neg naysayers, shielding out toxic people, shielding out, even if they say it, it's like, it's just, it's like, imagine, imagine you've got like, I, I don't know, some horrible person slinging abuse at you, okay? Well, you can do it. You can do it to me if you want to. I'm not gonna go anywhere, because actually it just slides off, the, it slides off that armor doesn't come into me unless I choose to invite it in, but I'm not going to. It just slides off. So that's also very interesting. There's also something about the fact that it's on the jawline. That helmet's on the jawline. The jaw is a place that we store an awful lot of tension, actually. When you're really uptight and tense, the trick is just to bring attention to your jaw and your forehead, of course, but your jaw will be like clamped, clamped tight like that. Relax your jaw, relax your forehead, relax your crown. Um, there seems to be something whereby when you're wearing this helmet that doesn't look quite like this, remember it's higher and it's chain mail, but it does seem to also come down past our ears and jaw. It's as though the whole headspace can relax. Oh, okay, Metatron is saying literally, it helps to clear our mind because if we have a, if we have a relaxed mind space, and if we have a relaxed headspace, wow, everything feels more doable, doesn't it? Everything feels more doable. So the this helmet of awakening, yes, it's for fortification and protection, but it's also, it's like self-care. It's like a self-care thing. 
how beautiful okay let's put it all together then um as i say i've talked for a while now you can make notes or watch back if you want to some of the things that have come out hopefully if you find them um, helpful but we'll, we'll put it all together um I'm just going to read a couple of comments, though, from people that came in because they're really good. And I feel as though maybe there are things that I haven't said which need saying. So this one's from David, David Waller. By the way, I love the fact that I've got so many male viewers. Thank you so much. I said that a few days ago or a few videos ago. And it's like they keep saying hi. So it's brilliant. It's brilliant that we're reaching the men. And I am going to be doing a video just for the men soon as well. So David says... Yes, please. When I meditate and say my prayer in the morning, I was guided to ask for the armour of light from God. I've been doing this for over a year. And when you mentioned it in the video, I was freaking out because I'm sure it's near enough the same thing that my spirit, my spirit guides asked me to do. I basically imagined it like the picture, but these shield things over the front and back of my heart and solar plexus chakras. OK, the first time I did it, I felt very safe and grounded which definitely helped me to cope with the drama at work. I also imagine a sword and a shield, as well as the shield in my left hand to, to deflect any negative. Um, it's very strange because I see it as sort of like liquid light armour and all, and it always get, gets built up at the feet first. Oh, OK, so it gets built up at the feet first, up the legs, over the torso and goes along the arms and hands. I then ask God and the angels to surround me in golden white light and this cloaks the armour in it. That's a nice, that's a nice idea. Um, you know, at the end of the day, we can reinforce if we need it, you know, with, with other things. Uh, somebody else, Jermaine, says, yes, Amanda, this is the third time that this subject is coming up this week. Um, so it must be important. Yeah. OK. Uh, Jennifer says, I suit up with, this is an important point because I replied to this. She says, uh, I suit up with 12 dimensional light every morning and night. Curious to know if uh, what Mike, if Metatron is talking about is similar to 12D shielding, which is super pure high dimensional light, untainted by the disturbances from lower dimensional frequencies. So it's a great point, Jennifer. And what I said to Jennifer was this. I said, I suspect that the shielding would be tailored for each person in terms of dimension, because there's no point putting a 12 dimensional shield on a th third dimensional mindset. Um, but it will be as high vibe as the person is able to hold close to them. OK, um, let's just have one more here. Um, yeah, Susanna. Uh, she's just saying that, yeah, life can be very hard at times. I think we all probably know that. Um, and particularly when you are a sensitive person, you feel things more deeply. So, yeah, empaths, we feel things really deeply. So it's, it's a blessing when you can use that painful experience to help others. But sometimes you don't have the strength or know how to get yourself out of it. Um, OK, she's got some you've got some you've had some issues in your life. So but the point is, she's talking about um, empathy and sensitivity and how difficult it can be. And that's why I really still believe that we all need some degree of fortification going forward. And then one more from Carol. Hello, beautiful Amanda. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I'll take all the compliments I can get. Um, hello, beautiful Amanda. Funny, my mum, a Christian missionary, puts on the armour every morning, so serious and asking protection for her daughters. And when suited and booted comes up, it feels shoes of dance, of movement, of flexibility, of free expression. And the suit feels like the matching of that finely tuned expression. His message is new freedom, preparing within. Um, yeah, re really great. Great comments on there. Thank you all so much. I do read them all. Because, yeah, I think I use the expression suited and booted. When you've got this on, you're suited and booted. But it, it's not meant to be deathly serious. Yes, you take it, you, t you have respect for what you're doing. But don't get into that mindset of that poor guy in Thailand who was like living in total fear. Have I got it right? Am I doing it right? 
okay? It's God that gives it to you. If God gives it to you, he's not going to do it wrong, okay? And remember what Metatron said about the diet, it's what you do most of the time that matters. It doesn't matter if you forget every now and again. We're all going to do that. So let's just now do, let's just put it all together. And this is just like a really simple technique that you can do every morning. And it's going to be really quick, okay? Because we need quick. We need quick and um, practical, Okay, we haven't got time to sit for half an hour every morning doing this. I certainly don't have that time. And I'm sure you don't either. So we wake up in the morning. Let's just take ourselves to waking up in the morning. Okay, and we're going to ask Metatron to guide this. So I'm imagining that I'm waking up in the morning and I'm ready to put my armour of God on. Do I take my armour of God off at night, Metatron? Um... That's a good question. That's a really good question. Let me just think, let me feel into that. Because of course you do need fortification through the night as well. Um, see if this resonates. It might not resonate for all of you. What I'm feeling I want to do is I'm being shown an angel watching over me as I sleep. Okay. Um, because I do believe that Oh, OK. He's saying that the armour of God that we're talking about here is very specific to earthbound energy. And <clears throat> excuse me, what happens a lot at night is that many people, including myself, astral travel. And we visit all sorts of different places and dimensions. We go here, there and everywhere and we're not always earthbound. And so therefore to wear equipment that is based for Earth isn't necessary. Imagine if in your dream time, I don't know, you, you visit the planet Mars or whatever, you know, and you land there with no disrespect, but all this clobber on. <laughs> it's just like, they'd look at you, it's like, you're the Martians. Like, what, what do you got all that on for? You don't need that here. So this is an earthbound, this is, these are earthbound things. So at night, if you feel you need it at night, I want to say, keep it on. It's not going to do you any harm. But for me personally, I feel as though I know that I'm protected at night anyway. And what you can do is you can just ask an angel to be, um, I, I just have one that watches over me at my crown. Uh, or he's saying, no, you've got one at your feet as well. Okay. Um, the thing is, I didn't know that. You know, I don't need to know that because it's just asking them to be with you as you sleep. But if you feel you need it, just go with what resonates for you, basically. But for me, I'd be taking my armour off at night, okay? Um, because I like to feel free at night. I, I, you know, it's like taking, you take your makeup off. It's just like, I, I, it's just, you, you don't need it at night. Um, Metatron is saying, call on me at night, okay? Because Metatron is linked to the void. Metatron is the one who um, watches over the void. When you go to sleep, you're in the void. You, you've entered into a void-like state. You've entered into the darkness. Um, so Met all you need is Metatron beside you at night, is what I feel, okay? When you're walking around day to day, yes, you still need Metatron around you. Remember, these are just tools, guys, okay? These are tools. So you uh, wake up, you invoke Metatron, and if you feel you need the armour, this is what we do. So we start at our feet and we invoke Archangel Sandalphon. So we call in Archangel Sandalphon, welcome to my day, welcome to my world, welcome to this moment, thank you for being present with my body. Please fortify my feet with the gospel and see what is put onto your feet. It'll change every day. You'll be given something for your feet. You can also um, use the sprays if you need to. I'm not trying to sell you sprays. I'm just saying if you've got them, you can use the sandal from bronze at that point. Then we um, bring in Archangel Michael. And Michael gives you your sword. And he's saying to me that the size of the sword might differ day to day as well. So don't be surprised by that. But it will always have the same um, strength. But some days I'm being shown it looks more like a dagger and other days it's more like a very long sword. And it literally is a case. You've brought in Sandalphon, you've asked him to clothe your feet and to fortify them with the gospel. You then bring in Archangel Michael 
and you ask him to give, please give me my sword. Give me my sword of the spirit. And you hold your hand out and he gives it to you. You also ask Archangel Michael to give you the shield of faith. And he gives it to you. And he's saying that the shield of faith tends to usually be the same size. It usually, it, I'm seeing it as quite large. Okay. Um, and it's put into your dominant hand. It's put onto your dominant hand. So it could be your right hand, could be your left hand. I'm just pausing there because I'm feeling another energy with the shield of faith. I'm feeling that I want to say like maybe guardian angel or uh, another guide that is around you. Oh, Met maybe it's just Metatron. I mean, for me, Metatron and Guardian Angel is almost like one. He's so present. Um, because what I'm feeling is that you don't have to go around imagining you're holding this shield all day. It's like, I feel that Michael and Metatron sort of, it's on you, but you're not holding it the whole day. It's weird. It's like it's, a, it's hovering. It's hovering. But it hovers after it, they've been put it into your hand. Okay, they put it into your dominant hand. And then it's like it's there. It's like there's an invisible connection to it. You're not having to hold your hand like that all day. It's just there. It hovers. And then we ask for the belt of absolute truth. And remember, we see that like the heavyweight belt. It goes all around you. You can imagine the belt. I don't think it's going to look very different day to day. I'm seeing it it's a terrible drawing that shape <laughs> okay like the heavyweight belt and that feels as though it's Metatron who gives you that it doesn't matter who gives them to you they're all archangels they all work together but I do feel that Uriel then comes in and he gives you the breastplate of righteousness. And then again, we have Metatron putting on the helmet of awakening. And you're imagining that. Remember, it goes upward. OK. So it shouldn't be hours and hours that you're doing that or imagining that. It is just literally about calling on those archangels, Sandalphon for the feet, Michael for the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith, the belt of truth, that could be Michael, it could be Metatron, the breastplate of righteousness feels as though it's Uriel, and the helmet of awakening feels as though it is Metatron. But you can interchange them, don't get bogged down in the details. It's like, it has the power like an affirmation. Okay, so by saying the word, the words are important. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll, I'll write these in the description box below. And um, I hope, I hope that that's helped. I, I found that interesting anyway. Hope you did too. Um, anything else to say? Let's just end with... Um, Michael, then I need to go. Archangel Michael, thank you for the gifts, the God-given gifts. He, he's saying the gifts that we bring, us Archangels, Michael, Metatron, Uriel, he says they all come from God and he says to thank a God ultimately for them. He says we are just the ones that help to administer and to um, help you receive them. It's like thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Okay, much love everyone. Um, have a good day. I'll be back soon.
beautiful day out there. Um, that's the wind. That's my view out of my window. That's my office. I just moved office, you see. So I've got this beautiful uh, window, and um, yeah, it's really it's a lovely, lovely space. I feel the energy so different in here. It's great. Much love. Battery's going to go. Bye for now. Suit and boot up, eh?